Hey everyone, it's me, Octavian, and I'm back with another Dev Diary, the one for today. Hoping to actually make these a little more often, as always, but you know, in any case. Today, I've been playing around with, not really playing around, but continuing to refactor the animation blueprint, which has turned out to be a massive endeavor, as always, you know, but you know, we try, as well as just generally cleaning up other things. And one of the things that has become a, you know, interesting thing that I wanted to mention today has been that the linked animation graph that I talked about yesterday has grown to a massive size after adding a few other properties. And as you can see, it's become kind of unmanageable, right? And after thinking about it for a little while, I realized that there's no real solution if you keep adding properties to shrink this. They don't have a, at least not with the properties, they don't have a don't expose this. You, you can't hide the property like this. That is true. However, then you can't assign it because the moment you bind it, it shows up again. And so what that means is this node is just going to keep growing the more properties I add. And I noticed that became a problem the moment I started noticing that we used to have aiming specific lag values in the template. And right now we don't have them. As you can see right here, there's only standing, 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 a lot of standing. And these things were being used before. This is the aiming lag. We used to have this and then a bunch more in the standing state machine and then a bunch more in the crouching state machine and then in the running state machine and so on, which is quite bad setup, but each had their own values. Now we just have this one node. And so we have to pass all the values to this one node and they have to be the final values with everything computed, which is great if you have everything computed and or if you're willing to pass every value to the node. I'm not sure I'm willing to pass every value to this node because it's going to grow exponentially. And so looking into solutions, I figured apparently you can, thankfully, pass structs to this sort of animation blueprint and they do work. The reason I'm saying this is because in animation blueprint input poses, if you're not aware, they, there is a node called an input pose, which really just is the little pin that shows up here. That's all. You can also add variables to this. So you can also make it, you know, allow you to input other things aside from the animation pose that goes in. And in here, you can't add structs. They don't show up. And so, or at least in my experience, they don't really show up. And so I, I didn't think they would show up, but thankfully they do. So I made a struct, slapped it here, runtime lag state, made a get runtime lag state. And now, right now, I'm in the process of filling get runtime lag state with oh, what currently amounts to, this is the standing state, and then we're going to have another aiming state. And we're going to have to somehow interpolate between these two. Now, what's the issue with that? Two problems. One, what do you use to interpolate? Thankfully, that one has a pretty easy solution. I. We have a, and this is going to be useful if you ever buy the template, and if you don't, then just at least take it as a tip, you know? It's very useful to have a animation curve on your skeleton, usually called aiming or something of the sort. Aiming is a pretty bad name, but, but you know, something like um, a better name, like alpha aiming curve or something of the sort. And still have to clean up the names for that. And uh, set it to one whenever your aiming state is active and set it to zero whenever your aiming state is not active. And then the cool thing you can do is that 
at other parts of the animation blueprint, you can know when things are, when you're aiming. To the point of precision of the actual, like, you know, uh, second decimal of a float. So it can be like 0 0.05 aiming, which is great because it's going to be perfectly in the transition of aiming all the time. Uh, so you can interpolate perfectly between two states is what I mean. To put it very simply, you can have a perfect interpolation that's going to match the transition from aiming to not aiming or from not aiming to aiming all the time if you use that curve. That's it. And so we can use that. The second problem, though, and this one is a bit more annoying, is that I need a ton of interp nodes because I pretty much need to just have a ton of these. Just add like V interp to between this one and then some other aiming value, uh, aiming location, lag, whatever. That's going to be annoying going to look a little eh. but that's uh, kind of the process that i'm on right now and so you know uh, hopefully i find a, a better way before i have to do this but just wanted to uh show you that the one other thing that i've uh, also been doing a little bit of is has been ensuring that a lot of the functions in the animation blueprint are for sure thread safe and in that process, I've also come across the other annoyance, which is obviously that you can't make every function thread safe because Unreal complains because there are some very specific rules about objects not being able to be accessed in thread safe functions. Anyway, we'll leave that. The point is there's some very annoying stuff. And so, you know, that's been quite annoying too, but that's been the day, basically. Um, so I just wanted to talk about, the, about that really. And uh, to not leave you without showing you what it looks like, uh, I will at least show you what it currently looks like. It, the aiming is a little bit broken, and it's using the um, the lag values from the standing. I know, th you know, things might look like they're a lot more broken than before. They're not. It, this is just what refactoring looks like. You may not be used to it. You're probably more used to it than me. I don't know, actually. It depends on your experience. Um, but pretty much... Everything is working again for the most part. It's just the aiming is, I think the offset is not set up. And then it's using offset values that aren't, uh, it's using an FOV that isn't there, I think, or offset values that aren't correct. And then the lag is the one from standing instead of the one from aiming, obviously. And I think um, the running is messed up, the tactic, and that's it. So other than that, I think we're pretty much good and almost done with the cleanup for the animation blueprint. So, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. We'll get there in a few days. I think uh, we're, we're slowly approaching that um, that point, I think. And so, yeah, that's about it, really. Also, as always, I just wanted to mention that uh, we have a free FPS template that you can download because I talk about the realistic FPS template and this one is our paid template. This is a new update to be specific, but we also have a free YouTube course that we made, and then the source files to that course, you can find them in the description. It's free. You can just go ahead and click on the link in the description and just get it for free. So, you know, go ahead and get that if you want. I also usually leave some sort of resources that I go ahead and make. That started with just like a PDF that I made once, and I think now there's two. So, you know. You can check those out. It's like refactoring resources and stuff of that sort. So, you know, check it out if you want. Have a great day. Peace.